When I first discovered Rocketbook's reusable notebooks, I immediately ordered both the executive and letter sizes because I wasn't sure which was best for me. And when the mini flip was released, I picked up one of those as well. Though I primarily use the executive size as my everyday notebook, as you may have gathered from my bullet journaling video, I still like to keep them all handy because each has its own pros and cons. So in this video series, I want to give a quick glimpse into how I use each of the different sizes of Rocketbook notebooks, starting with the letter size, in case you're trying to decide which is best for you. The first way I like to use my letter size Rocketbook is by documenting feedback and changes that I have on products that I'm working on. As a mechanical engineer, I like to design things, but I rarely get it perfect the first time, so if I need to document some issues, the dotted pages of the letter notebooks are perfect because they provide the structure necessary to make reasonably neat sketches quickly while still giving me the room to annotate out little notes. And the convenience of Rocketbook's scanning and cloud storage means that I can easily store or share the changes with collaborators. Additionally, the large dotted pages are great for getting feedback on different ideas. Here I have a few layouts for my Nanoleaf canvas lights, so I would show these sketches to friends or family and get them to each give out a set number of green or red dots to the layouts to indicate which they like or dislike. This helps me to decide which one I want to use. I also like to use my letter size rocket book to sketch out graphs when I start a new research study because it helps me to visualize the data that needs to be collected and what my hypotheses will be. I eventually use software like Excel to make the final plots once the real data is collected, but in the meantime, having a sketch to use as a discussion tool is always handy and the dotted pages help to keep everything reasonably tidy. These dotted pages are also excellent for documenting my design ideas when I'm starting a project because they provide the structure and space to sketch out the important objects that need to interface with whatever I'm going to build. In this case, a new laptop and iPad stand for my desk. I also have the space for any calculations that I need to make. And of course, some rough sketches of what I eventually plan to draft up on a CAD program. Again, having the ability to quickly store these designs in a pre-assigned destination is handy because I don't always get around to completing my hobby projects immediately. And that brings me to some of the more standard uses. I find that, unless I know that my notes are going to be brief, the letter size Rocketbook is my best option for freeform note taking, and the template I like to use is the Cornell system. If you're not familiar with it, you divide the page into three sections, a bottom section for the summary or take home message, then a thin and thick upper section that you can use to document points and thoughts that usually relate to one another. Two ways I use this are going into a meeting where I can plan the questions that I have ahead of time so that I don't forget them, then keep general meeting notes during the session and indicate where my questions were answered before summarizing what needs to be done next at the bottom so that I can add some tasks to my agenda moving forward. Then the second example I have is documenting some of my thoughts about products as I develop video reviews. In this case, I indicate which aspects of the product are important to discuss, then as I use it, I jot down a few thoughts before summarizing everything in a take home message about who I think should or shouldn't buy this device. My one tip for using the Cornell system in a rocket book is to keep the thinner section near the binding because you can usually take more time and write less here. So this helps to mitigate some of the annoyances associated with bumping your palm against the coil binding. The final use I have is for copying course notes. Now, I don't do much of this since finishing my degree, and depending on your instructor, you may not even take notes like this anymore, but I thought I would provide an example just to show what it could look like. If you're copying out notes verbatim, creativity is less important, but it's nice to have a digital backup of your notes that won't fade over time in case you need to reference them in the future. The biggest issue you'll probably run into here is how long it takes for the ink to dry when writing your notes. So to avoid smudging, I like to use the 0.5mm friction pens that dry a little faster. Then I start my notes on the back side of a page to allow the first page more time to dry while I write on the second. I would also suggest that you leave space for more complicated figures and take pictures of them in class so that you can take the time to let the ink dry if you want to use a ruler and make them look neater. And that's it. I'll leave links to where you can pick up the notebooks and supplies in the description below. Otherwise, I hope you found this video interesting. If so, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please leave a comment down below. I'll see you next time.